G'day. Behind me, as you might be able to see, is the crane I've devised for lifting up my dividing head and my rotary table onto the mill. They weigh about 30 kilograms a piece and uh, I'm getting tired of, of lifting them up. And so this video is about making up a lifting frame for uh, the dividing head. Uh, I'd already made one up for the rotary table and that was pretty straightforward. This one's a little bit more complicated, but uh, I thought it, it, it might be uh, useful for people to see you know, how, you, how you come about working out where the centre of gravity is and, and making something to, uh, to accommodate that. Um, this, is, this is purely what I've done and uh, it's not any sort of professional advice or anything like that about making lifting jigs, it's just something I've done in the shed. So, you know, if in doubt, please don't, or get it checked. This is the starting piece. Uh, this is just a bit of uh, galvanised water pipe. And originally when I bought it, it had a half inch BSP thread on each end. And so to capitalise on that, save myself a bit of work, which probably didn't really, but you know, always something different. Uh, I just made up a, a, basically a nut that screwed on. Uh, and I'll show you a bit of that because there was a, a, a bit of um, uh, trickiness involved in that. This end here is just a half inch Whitworth bolt and inside there there's a sleeve uh, where I've sleeved between the, the, the diameter of the, the shank of the bolt and the inside bore of the, uh, the pipe. I cleaned that up, there was a, a, a fin in there, I cleaned that up with a drill bit and then I've just pushed a couple of um, uh, roll pins in there just to, to lock that in place. That's going to go through the body of the dividing head and then I'll have a, a, a loop on here and a loop on here joined at the top with a, a lifting loop. Now to go on the end there, there's a nut and there's, it's, well you could do this two ways I guess. One is if, you, if the chuck of your lathe was here you could do all this sort of stuff, uh, part it off and then just hang on to that bit and clean up the face or you could do it as I did it and do it this way. And the reason I did it that way was I hadn't thought about that feature there uh, when, I, when I finished it, or sort of when I was starting to do it. Um, so what I had to do there was get some uh, three millimeter aluminum pieces as, as packers, uh, a bit of masking tape to hold them in place while I put them in the three jaw, and then I could clamp up on that without damaging the knurl. Now the reason for that is that the strap that comes down here is going to be uh, just a bit of a 5mm plate. Now, if I just had that going up to there, if I was a bit slack, I could have that sitting back there and jumped off and all that sort of thing. So what I've done is I've put a bit of a recess so that when that's done up, it actually comes to about there somewhere. So that should allow me to, to hang that without any fear of it you know, dropping onto threads and all that sort of thing. To tap the bush, the setup was something like this. Uh, that's a half BSP tap, and unfortunately the, the tap is just too, a little bit too big to go into my tap wrench. So I tapped it on the lathe to get it concentric, but the, the way you do this, um, if, you, if you just put a, a, a spanner on the back there, it'll tend to pull the tap offline. And so the dimple in the back, you need to put a center in, and this is only being posed, so uh, don't worry too much about the, the lack of lubricant, but certainly some tapping fluid on there helps. But it's a matter of winding it in, and while you're doing that, cranking the tailstock forward so that the centre always remains centred in that um, um, pocket in the back there. Right? And that way, you can keep the tap online. If you don't, uh, it'll gradually veer off and then you'll have, start having a, a, a drunken thread. I'm now putting the holes in my end pieces that um, and the bracket will go over the top here and the, and the pin will go through. Uh, I've already done one. I used an annular cutter for that. I could have used a, a twist drill, but that's relatively thin and so my big concern there is that if I, if I drilled through that, I, there was a good chance that it would catch and um, pull, the, pull the material up if it wasn't well anchored. 
and so if I've got to clamp it down and, and, and really hold it tight I figured I might as well use the annular cutter it gives you a slightly cleaner cut uh, and uh, is a little bit safer from that from that perspective I've welded one of these things on uh, sorry about the welds my stick welding is a bit out of practice but you can see the general form it's going to be that one will go over here and so I'll have a a pair of holes uh, the pin will go through and then it's a matter of working out where the lifting point is now I could just put a loop in the middle there but the dividing head is should we say irregularly shaped and so the chances are the center of gravity isn't in the middle it's off to one end so I'll show you how to work that one out in a moment after I've, I've, uh, I've done this but first of all I want to put that hole in uh, and weld that on so that uh, all the welding or most of the welding is done uh, before the day gets too hot. I've bent up a lifting loop out of a bit of uh, 3 8 bar. I'm not quite sure about this one. I got a, a whole bunch of material from my uncle and uh, this could well be a bit of um, silver steel or tool steel in which case it's possibly one of the most inappropriate and expensive lifting loops ever. However, we'll see how it all goes. The way I, I find the centre of gravity, well there's two ways. One is you could hang it and as long as you can adjust the hanging point you can work out where it, where it hangs from. But the, the, the easier way is just to get a bit of round bar like this and balance that so it's, it's around about the, the, the balance point. Okay, And so that's about there. So I'm going to put a mark there and that's basically where the top of my lifting point will be. Now, if your thing is symmetrical this way, then that's all you need to worry about. I know that this is, is a little bit heavy this way. And so what I'm going to do there is, because this pivots and it's not going to hold things up, I'm going to put a loop on here with, so I can put a strap around here and just hold this side up with a strap. I've done that with the rotary table, works quite nicely, um, but the first thing is to get that, that lifting loop on there somewhere. Now that's, that's going to go up there and that's why I've got this reinforcing piece underneath here uh, because that'll, that'll pull there and if I didn't have that there that might tend to want to bend or, or, or just move a little bit there. So by having that there I've stiffened that up and I've got this you know, basically, so this is a fingers crossed a rigid beam uh, and we'll just pick up from here and here strap over the side, finished item. Uh, I've just knurled the end on the, of the knob there because I figured if I've got a knurl there to help my grip, I might as well have one on the other end of the pin. This is positioned where I, uh, where I worked out the, the C of G was and I've put a, a loop on there for a, a strap, which we'll do in a minute. But if you notice here, that's now lifting level. So I've got that in you know, pretty much the right position. I just need the, the strap to um, keep it level this way. Strap's on, uh, I'll shorten that uh, in a little while. I'll just cut that off there and then heat seal the end because uh, that's, that's all the strap I need. This strap is from a, uh, an auto shop, I think. Nothing terribly uh, fantastic about it. It's just a tie down strap. I just looped it around one of the larger pieces here so that when this thing lifts, it lifts up flat and that makes it a lot easier to position it on the, on the table here or position it back in the drawer. Now one thing I should say about this is that I wouldn't be allowed to get away with this in industry. What would have to happen is that this would have to go off to be tested and certified by a, um, a qualified tester to do this uh, and they'd apply all sorts of proof loads, there'd need to be drawings, there'd need to be all sorts of things. In this case, because it's my shed, I can I can do this sort of thing. But um, at the end of the day, if ever I decide to sell this setup, uh, this is probably one thing that I won't be able to sell because it's not strictly speaking um, kosher. But um, yeah, there we go. So well, thanks for watching, and uh, see you for the next one.